a little bit about me. Uh, a few years ago, I used to run a hackerspace in Beirut. I got into mapping. Uh, I work now for Development Seed. You can see it on my T-shirt. We build a lot of cool tools for OpenStreetMap. Now, uh, I built this over the past few months. I wanted to share it with the community, start a discussion. So um, here's what we're going to talk about. Basically, why we need a, a team software. This is just one solution, but why we need a team software, what we've built. Some technical notes. So who here is a developer or considers themselves a developer? OK, two thirds. But for the other one third, if I'm talking too fast, you can just stop me or like shout at me like, no, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and then we're going to talk about roadmap and ideas and then open it up for a discussion. So boom, statement. OSM is a decentralized social network. Everyone here is part of a small community or a large community. Everyone kind of, um, you know, no one maps alone. Or if you do, maybe find a friend. But <laughs> if you are mapping, you are part of, a, part of this great social network. And you know here, we're in this conference. We're all talking to each other, sharing ideas. And another thing that's in these conferences is you see a lot of apps. And OSM is not just this community of mappers. It's a bunch of disconnected apps. You've got apps like, and great apps. They, power you up, give you these capabilities. They, you know, supercharger mapping, right? Uh, Tasky Manager, OSM Sha, uh, all the great editors. But they don't talk to each other. And so the OSM user experience, uh, going into one app, uh, editing or getting tasks or whatever, and then going to another app that is, um, that feels disconnected. And we know that apps are building tools for coordinated mapping. So we've got Osam Cha here. You know, they have a concept of teams. They have a concept of lists. And then in the tasking manager, there's, you know, this pull request and uh, issue that says, hey, we also need teams. But OSM Cha and Task Manager, sure, they meet up here and they can do that and they're developers in the community and they say, maybe we can talk to each other. But what about other developers that want to build teams or want to build this feature at least? So we were thinking, okay, we need an API and this API needs to allow all the apps to talk to each other. And it allows you to have a team that is, for example, in the task manager, and then be portable to OSM Cha. And then this API has to be flexible as well. You know, the schema doesn't have to be really hard. And then it's very important that it uses OSM IDs. OSM IDs give us the security that you are who you say you are, and that you're part of the community. And Roland was talking about this, right? Uh, that it ties you to a known quantity in the OpenStreetMap ecosystem. And also, we don't want to anger anyone. So <laughs> it should be part of you know, this community discussion here. So that's Teams. Teams is an app platform, and it's an API. When you say app platform, maybe that's really like large and uh, you know, it, it could mean a whole a uh, slew of things, right? But basically, it's we're allowing developers to build an app on top of Teams. So we're allowing developers to integrate with our API. Does anyone, everyone here knows what an API is? Or doesn't know? Okay. So basically, an interface so that if I have an application, I want a common interface to communicate with another app. And that's what we're trying to create. Because in the end of the day, we want to create a unified user experience. We want to be able to go on the task manager, create a team, and then find that team somewhere else. Or if someone goes and builds a chat app, they should have teams as well. So this is how it looks like. It's very retro. I love it. 
So that's the front page. It's at mapping.team. If you click on explore teams, you can see a list of teams. You can see a map. Some teams have put a location so that you can filter teams using uh, map, you know, the map, map bounds and B boxes. Because, sure, it's called teams. And you might think that it's for large mapping teams, but we also want to cater to local communities. <coughs> this is what a team looks like, a team profile page. It has a bio, uh, a hashtag, but you know, this is more free text to kind of find your team's data somewhere else. Uh, and the location, like I, I was saying. And then members of that team. If you're a moderator of a team, you can sign in and edit this information, add and remove members. So here's the scary part, technical notes. <laughs> and again, if I'm talking too fast, uh, please let me know. So this is kind of what we want teams to be, right? So the circle thingy is a database. And then the square next to it, OSM team. Can everyone see the graph? Yeah. That thing is the API, right? This is where it stores all the team's data and then gives it to people. And then we have a, uh, something in the middle called an OAuth server. Who here knows what OAuth means, at least? Yeah? You've seen it before. If you, are, let's say, on Instagram, and then you want to import your Facebook contacts, you have to click connect my Facebook account or something, and then it would go to Facebook and it says, do you want to allow Instagram access to your Facebook account? And it does this for every user. Why does it do it? Because we want, uh, because Instagram and Facebook want to create a secure connection. You have private contacts. And so maybe you have private teams. And you don't want to reveal who those team, team members are. Maybe you're a secret railway mapper team and <laughs> you don't want to say who the elite crew is. So this, is, this allows us to create private team, this consent mechanism. And so other apps can connect through this consent mechanism and say, it takes you to OSM Teams, and it says, do you want to allow uh, X app access to your Teams? And then it brings you back. And then there you have your private Teams, or public Teams, or whatever the API provides you. But you have a secret uh, uh, key to allow access to your user account. Does that make sense for everyone? Thanks. Now, everything I said is written by a bunch of nerds in these uh, contract, uh, uh, these uh, texts called R uh, RF, uh, what were they called? Ah. RFCs, right. And they're, uh, they're really, really hard to parse or you have to take a long time to parse them. I know because it took me two months to write, read all of them. But I didn't want to implement all of this because it's error prone and it's a lot of security stuff and we shouldn't be responsible for the security stuff. So we use another library that can abstract this and they have their own security audits. Sort of a library called Hydra. Um, and it just, uh, you see, it places itself in the middle and it says, if you're a user, you talk to Hydra and then it talks to our server and then the login provider, that's OSM. Because you log into OSM and you log into OSM teams using OSM, so it knows that you're you. And then Hydra can give you these secret keys and I don't have to implement all that uh, really complicated stuff. And then this is how it looks like. This is the app structure. You have your OSM ID, and that's coming from OSM. Then you have the API and that ID that is secure. And then you can build your apps on top of Teams. Now, 
I did this, uh, I made this diagram because I wanted to say that here we built another login on top of the OSM ID. We built another authentication layer. And what that allows us to do is add more metadata to this new login. So it can be really anything you want. Like we built OSM teams because we wanted to make sure that it's OSM IDs and those OSM IDs are tied to your user data, but then that login can have your team's data. And so the flow of, uh, oh, sorry, before I talk about the flow, if you're a developer, if you want to integrate with our platform, we have an API guide. We have uh, API docs. We have example applications of how to, you know, integrate with teams. And you can always, of course, ask me, like, oh, I, I don't know how this works. And then I'll help you out, of course. But once you integrate, uh, you would want to create a client first. So, for example, a SOTM app. It, it looks very similar to OSM auth if you've already implemented OSM auth or any OAuth application. And then Hydra gives you these client IDs and these client secrets. And then you use that. So you can go to OSM Teams, you sign in, you get a client ID, client secret, and then my cool app or my secret railway chat app can then talk to Teams. You get this client secret and then you build your app, you implement the OAuth 2 protocol on your client side and then you can integrate with Teams. And I know that's boring, I'll skip over to the cool part, but this is how it looks. So if this is uh, a, a small example app I built on Glitch. Glitch is, a, if you go to glitch.com, you can build really cool apps really fast. Uh, and I created a connect mapping team button. So if you click on this, it works, okay. Uh, it takes you to OSM teams, it tells you log in with OSM. You log in with OSM, it asks for my fingerprint, log in. And then once you grant access from the first OSM ID, it tells you Glitch app wants access to your teams. You allow access and there I have my private team, Map Kibera, which is not my team, it's the one Mikkel made. But uh, you can see that that flow was pretty simple. That is the flow that you would want to use to integrate in your app. You press connect team takes you to SM Teams, grants access, takes you back with your private teams. No? Okay. And then this is the API. So you can get teams, you can add people to your team, uh, you can do a search by location. And that's what we've implemented right now, but we want to of course, expand this API with community input. So, roadmap. The first thing we want to make sure works is private and public team, because I know that there are, that is our most uh, requested feature, private teams. We want to make sure there's a privacy policy, uh, because that was actually the first issue that someone opened. I was like, where's the privacy policy? So we have to address, address that. Uh, and we want to figure out a way to work with the community. You know, this is on a development seed server. We would really rather be it a neutral party, be it on an OSM server or some US or some neutral entity. We'll have to figure that out. And some ideas, I've been talking to people around in the conference and uh, there was some pushback, but some people want to build on top of this already. So someone wants to build a chat app and someone wants to build event planning. And I'm sure that there are people here that have uses for teams, right? They want to integrate with this and get their teams. And we're not here to give you all the ideas. We're creating the platform so that people can, you know, think about all the, their use cases for Teams and then integrate with it. So if you had a way to use this, 
I want to hear about it. Or maybe if you're a developer, build something. Some good points, some bad points. I touched really quickly on this. So some will ask, why is this not in the core API? I think it should be in the core API, but it's tough to get something into the core API without people testing it out first. And so we're opening it up for public beta. Everyone here can use it at mapping.team. That's the URL. Show us your use cases. Show us that this is something that you want to integrate with, and then we can standardize the API. And we want to do this now because we've seen apps like Tasking Manager and OSM Cha already building teams. And we, want, we don't want to be stuck in a, a developer battle you know, two years down the line, everyone siloed back again into this disconnected ecosystem. So we're trying to force a conversation here. And we're here to talk about it. Uh, and I hope that developers come up to me and say, or open a pull request, or open an issue and say, hey, let's integrate, let's figure out how to standardize the API. So that's Teams. Basically, it's a social glue for the OSM apps. It's, uh, you know, we talked about how it was built and what we want to do with it. And uh, I'm going to open the floor for discussion now. So. Uh, Hello? Hey. Um, so if you have a question, please raise your hand. And if on you're on this side of the room, I will run a mic to you on this side of the room. Um, Usha will run a mic to you, um, and um, you want to go first? Uh, we have about uh, 10 minutes. Yes, one basic question you didn't make clear. What is an app? Is an app only? Uh, uh, there are people who think app is exclusively for an Android smartphone, or for smartphones, or will it be for Linux and Windows as well? Yeah, so when I meant uh, app, I meant any piece of code that wants to interact with Teams. Be, you know, of course, any operating system app, it could be any smartphone app, it could be web applications, which are just websites that have a bit more code to do this, uh, um, th this type of interaction. Um, so you built some infrastructure, and you showed us on the picture how it looks with the database. Where does this database sit, and what's, like, what's the assurance that you're not going to switch off the database in three months' time and say, ah, the experiment didn't work, and then all the teams are gone? Yeah, very good question. Right now, uh, Teams is in beta. I wouldn't build anything with production data on it. Uh, and we are trying to say, this is how it works. This is how you would potentially integrate. I do want to get it to production, and I want to be able to have a conversation of where should this production database be. And hopefully, with the community, we can come to an answer. Could you, could you, you say, in which case do they use a need to authenticate on mapping teams, and in which case it's just the OSM login. Like, so, when I build an app, in, in which case the user would need to authenticate also in the mapping teams API. Um, in which case would? Uh, the users would need to, to make the authentication on the mapping ah, teams. Ah, to connect. Oh, yes. OK. So the API, uh, the if you want to have any uh, sort of permissions, like create and update a team um, or delete a team, yeah, uh, you would need to authenticate with the API. If you are implementing private teams and you want to have your private team synced with the API, you also need to request with a key. So. Uh, if you are just working with public teams and you're just showing them, public teams in our, in our schema are teams that 
divulge their team members and private are not, right? Uh, so if you're just working with public teams, then you're not, you don't need a key. And you can search without a key. Any other questions? So if this goes too far, you'll let me know. But um, what you just said, um, you know, what if there's a team discussing political change in China and, you know, somebody gets added to a team without their knowledge and then the police come and say, you are in this team, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. That's a good question. And we've been thinking about that, you know. Um, we want to be able to implement notification. So there are many solutions to this problem, right? You can, and, and different social networks have different ways of handling the problem. Like on WhatsApp, you can leave at any time. Someone needs to know your, uh, your telephone number. Uh, in a Facebook group, you have to confirm before it being added to a group. So you can do a confirm model. You can do a model where uh, the person needs to know something about you, like the, the telephone number or the user ID. Uh, or you can do something where all teams are closed and you used to have to send an invitation and that, that person has to accept the invitation. Uh, but it's, it's definitely something that we've been thinking about. Another way to do this is, for example, we create a user setting like, I don't want to be added to groups. So uh, this would be uh, one way to handle. I encourage you to open that issue, and maybe we can discuss it. Any last questions? OK, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>